Ethicon Circular Stapler The Ethicon Circular Stapler is used throughout the alimentary tract for end-to-end, end-to-side, and side-to-side -side anastomoses. It is available in four sizes for proper matching to the diameter of the lumen. Steps for use Open the device by turning the adjusting knob counterclockwise until the anvil shaft is fully exposed. With the anvil removed, retract the device trocar until it is no longer exposed. Look at the tissue compression scale and ensure the indicator is not in or near the green zone. If the indicator is in or near the green zone when the device trocar is retracted, release of the safety is possible, which could lead to unintended activation of the firing trigger, resulting in knife exposure and premature staple deployment. Insert the anvil into the lumen using either the open lumen purse string technique or the closed lumen stapling technique, ensuring that the tissue is located at the suture tying area. With the anvil removed and the device trocar retracted until it is no longer exposed, insert the device so it fits snugly against the distal transection site. Fully extend the device trocar and pierce the distal transection site with the trocar by rotating the adjusting knob counterclockwise. Continue to extend the trocar until the orange band is visible. During device insertion, ensure the safety remains in the locked position to prevent premature staple deployment. Attach the anvil to the extended trocar. Do not clamp across or grip the locking springs when attempting to reattach the anvil. Close the device by rotating the adjusting knob clockwise. As the device closes, it is important to ensure the tissue remains in the proper orientation and no extraneous tissue is included. Tissue thickness may vary even within a single patient's GI tract. That's why Ethicon's circular staplers are designed to provide flexibility for use with different tissue thicknesses. As the tissue is being compressed, you will start to feel resistance in the adjusting knob. Continue to turn the adjusting knob slowly until appropriate tissue resistance is felt for a secure anastomosis. Rapid compression may not allow sufficient time for fluid egress from the tissue and generate resistance before the appropriate compression is achieved. Wait 15 seconds to allow for adequate tissue compression and adjust if needed to maintain appropriate tissue resistance. Once the device is fully closed and you are satisfied with the compression applied to the tissue, check the tissue compression scale to confirm that the orange staple height indicator is within the green range. The device will form staples at the height matching the compression applied during closure. If the indicator is not in the green range when fully compressed, the tissue thickness exceeds the indicated range of the stapler. To fire the instrument, draw the red safety back toward the adjusting knob until it seats into the body of the instrument. The safety should not be released if the instrument is not in the safe firing range. Once the safety has been released, do not turn the adjusting knob to ensure the instrument remains in the safe firing range. Doing so may result in undesirable consequences defined earlier. When the safety has been released, squeeze the firing trigger with firm, steady pressure. Fire the instrument in one continuous stroke until the firing trigger touches the device body. You should notice both tactile and audible feedback during the firing sequence when cutting through the breakaway washer. The firing stroke must be completed. Do not partially fire the instrument. Incomplete firing can result in malformed staples, incomplete cut line, bleeding, and leakage from the staple line and or difficulty removing the device. Ensure that the firing trigger is squeezed until it touches the handle to ensure proper staple formation and cutting of tissue. To safely release the device from the newly formed anastomosis, return the red safety to the lock position to prevent unintended knife exposure and damage to the anastomosis, and turn the adjusting knob counterclockwise for two complete revolutions, 360 degrees times two. Ensure the tissue has been released by rotating the head of the device 90 degrees in both directions, taking care to stabilize the head of the device to minimize movement of the distal tip. Remove the device by gently pulling it out while simultaneously rotating. If you rotate the device and it does not freely release from the anastomosis, or if the device does not withdraw easily, turn the adjusting knob counterclockwise one additional complete revolution, 360 degrees. Then attempt removal again by rotating the device 90 degrees in both directions. 
gently pull out the device while simultaneously rotating. Remove the anvil, washer, and donuts from within the circular knife. Examine the integrity of the donuts, which should be intact and include all tissue layers. Carefully check the anastomosis for leakage and by your own technique make appropriate repairs. Key takeaways. Adjust the device slowly until appropriate tissue resistance is felt for a secure anastomosis. Wait 15 seconds to allow for adequate tissue compression and readjust if needed to maintain appropriate tissue resistance. To fire the instrument, squeeze the firing trigger with firm, steady pressure in one continuous stroke until the firing trigger touches the device body. The firing stroke must be completed. Do not partially fire the instrument. To safely release the device from the newly formed anastomosis, return the red safety to the locked position and turn the adjusting knob counterclockwise for two complete revolutions, 360 degrees times two.